Welcome to Strong and Balanced. My name is Pat Agostino. I'm a physical therapist here with PeopleFit. If you've never done this type of class before, we always ask you to consult your physician or physical therapist first. Uh, please just work within your capabilities. And all these exercises can be done uh, besides the laying down ones uh, at a countertop or something for you to hold on to in front. So with that, let's begin. We're going to do a short little warm up that we always do. Knees are soft, belly buttons in, good posture. Let's just circle around that neck by trying to pull your neck up off your shoulders. If you notice, I'm not trying to go as wide of a circle as I can. It's about pulling that head right off. And it's supposed to be a gentle one. Some days it'll feel good. Some days you'll say, oh, not so good. And let's reverse direction. Maybe a little shoveler's neck today. I don't know how much snow you guys got. Great. Fantastic. Some arm circles in one direction. If it bothers you to circle up in this area, then just slide your hands down a little bit. Remember, open up that chest so you have that nice and broad. Shoulders are back. Good. And let's reverse that direction, please. Fantastic. Little arch in your back, belly button in. And we're just going to do a little bit of stepping. Fantastic. Feet nice and wide. Let's bend those knees, stick your bottom out, and we're just going to rotate side to side. Fantastic. With the arms, we're gonna come forward and back now. You wanna start warming up your lower body a little bit more. Knees are soft. We're gonna step back at a diagonal and we're gonna do the same with the opposite foot. Remember, you're not really trying to push off that back foot. You're trying to engage here, especially in these glutes to pull yourself back up. Only go to your level of comfort and do not work through any knee pain, please. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's come on back up. Uh, we're going to get into one of your balance positions. The easiest is feet together. You can try heel to the inside of your opposite foot's big toe, one foot in front of the other, or foot up off the ground, whatever position that is. I want you to soften those knees, belly button in. And let's just turn your head left and right. As you start to listen to those feet. If this is the type of morning where you're doing a lot of stepping or grabbing onto counters, then you bring your feet an inch wider. If it's super easy, you can bring your feet an inch an hour and see how that works. If you have your feet staggered, I ask you to switch feet, please. If you have your feet together, just keep them there. Remember the goal here is to get a little bit of a dance in your feet, maybe use those hips, maybe your arms, just to get start to get some balance reaction started. Three, two, and one. Let's go feet together. Let's slide your left foot back, right arm out to the side. Make sure this hip is in, hand on your hip, and we're just going to kick this leg out to the side. And you're going to do it with your toes pointed straight ahead. You do all this right, and you keep this hip down. Hopefully you'll start to feel these muscles working back in here. If I'm just shortening my waist like this, then I'm just using my abdominals to do this, and which is great, but it's not the point of this exercise. Four, 
three, two, and one. Let's go to the opposite side. We'll slide that foot back and we'll kick the opposite leg out to the side. In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go right to your weight, please. If you have one, you don't necessarily need it, okay? We're gonna get right back into your balance position that you were in. And with the elbow inside the body, we're just gonna do a few little bicep curls here. You may actually feel even more stable with the weight in your hand if you do. And you wanna try picking your front foot up off the ground or bringing it a little bit more narrow. Fantastic. In three, two, one. And let's reverse sides. Same thing on the opposite side. Three, in five, four, three, two. And one, we're gonna take the weight, we're gonna hold it this way. And if you're comfortable, we're gonna do some body weighted squats, okay? So that's about getting weight on your heels, toes are slightly out, and you're gonna stick your bottom out as you come up and down. Try to maintain a little arch in your lower back and you don't have to come that, down that far. If it bothers your knees, come down two inches and right back up, but you go to your level of comfort, remember, Head and chest are up, looking at your monitor. Good. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Let's take that weight. We're going to hold it in the front. Or if you want to hold it behind your back, you can. Feet are hips width apart, toes are pointing straight ahead. And we're just gonna do your heel and toe raises. If you feel for safety's concern, you should have a hand available to grab onto a counter, then please just put the weight down and you're just lifting your toes off the ground and then your heels off the ground. In five, four, three, two, and one. Weight's gonna be into your left hand. We're gonna do a bent over row. Easiest way to do that is to step forward with the right leg, weights in the left hand. You're gonna lean forward at your waist and you're gonna pull your elbow up by your side, okay? Nice and tight by your body. Don't curl your wrist. Your wrist stays in a nice neutral position. You're looking on the floor, probably three to four feet in front of you. In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go right to the opposite side, please. Lean forward slightly. Keep this shoulder away from your ear so you're keeping it down. And Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, let's get right back into your balance position you were in a few minutes ago. And I'll give you an option for this one. If your shoulders don't bother you, we're gonna put the weight on top of your shoulder with your elbow slightly in, Chest is up, but knees are soft, and you can push overhead. If you have shoulder issues, I'm going to have you continue to do your bicep curls, okay? Or if you like, you can do a combination. Curl, press. Okay? Curl, press. Good. Should you be concerned if one shoulder bothers you and you can only do this one with one side? No. Just do it with, if you do curls on one side and presses with the other, it's absolutely fine. 
five, four, three, two, and one more. Excellent. Let's switch to the other side. Let's switch feet. And again, you're going to either curl or press, but remember, get the upper body right, chest up, good posture. <clears throat> Do all these exercises with good posture. And guess what? You're encouraging those muscles to work in the right way to support you. Do them in a slouchy way. You're just encouraging that. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two more, and one. That's great. All right. We're going to put the weight um, down in front of you on the floor. If you have something that's going to roll away on you, uh, maybe just stand it up on edge like this, okay? Like a can of soup. You don't want lunch to go running away from you. All right, so we're going to get we're going to get probably six inches away from it. I want you to shift over onto your right side, and you're simply going to touch your left toe on the weight, and then back down. Weight and down. If you can do it without touching the floor on the way back down, even better. It's like you're touching an egg, right? You notice I'm shifted over this way. My head, my hip, my foot, we're all lined up. Up and down. If you wanna try double tapping your weight, tap one side, tap the other side. Remember, it's like a, an egg that you don't wanna crack, nice and easy. Good. We're really working on stabilizing on the side. You need to be close to something to hold on to. That's fine. I don't want your foot to get caught on the weight. One side, the other side. And if you keep this knee bent, you'll start to say, oh yeah, that work is that leg is working a little bit. In three, two, and one. All right, let's shift over onto your left side. Remember, bend that left knee. Tap the weight and return. Tap and return. Good. And then you can double tap one side, the other side, and maybe not even touch the ground behind you. <clears throat> and five, four, three. Two and one, fantastic. Let's uh, get rid of that weight. If you have a glass of water or something to grab to drink, please do. And then we're gonna come right back to a standing position when we're done. Okay, let's come on, let's come on back to where we were. Uh, we're gonna just do a little bit of walking back and forth. Um, so let's get your um, heel in front of your toe or maybe heel to the inside of your big toe. And today we're walking on the moon, okay? So what does that mean? You're walking in slow motion and no gravity. So we're just gonna take a nice big step Good, gently step on down. We're gonna do the same side and step. Good, big step. You can even do the arm movements if you want. Then at a party, you can tell your friends, oh, look at me. No, I'm not moving slow, I'm moving fast. Step forward and step forward. Good, we'll work on the mind next week. All right, same thing on the way back. It's much easier when you're stepping back slowly if you shift your weight onto that back foot, then take a step behind, okay? Shift your weight onto that foot and step. Good. And slowly step back. 
For some of you, this will be a fast step and two more steps and step and last step. All right. If that was super easy, we'll add some head turns to this. Okay. So we're going to step forward, turn your head right, then left. Good. Step forward slowly, right and left. Forward, right and left. Forward, right and left. And let's step on back slowly, right and left. Did you remember to shift your weight back? Step backwards. Turn your head right and left. Step on back, right and left. One more. Step on back, right and left. Excellent work. Let's come back up to the middle. Let's stretch out those calves. Let's turn your left toes slightly in. Nice long step forward with the opposite foot. Shoulders back, belly button in, and let's bend this front knee. And you'll either feel a little stretch in the front of your hip or the back of your calf, or you will mysteriously stop. You always can hold on to something if you'd like. <clears throat> and 10 more seconds. Good. Let's go on to the other side. Nice long step with your other foot, belly button in, shoulders back, and let's bend your front knee. It was good to actually have some snow. My son and I went out snowshoeing. I got these snowshoes on Craigslist last year. We used them a bunch of times. And I said, I wonder if that's something I'll do. If you haven't done it before, it is uh, it's fantastic. I love it. And you're in the snow and, and the grips on the bottom of these snowshoes are so good. I, I didn't slip once. Ten more seconds. Fantastic. Come on back up. Feet, hips width apart. And let's really reach on over. Hand on your hip. We're going to touch your heel to the inside of your shin and then your toe out to the floor, trying to stay out. Keep your head steady. If you can just do that, keep your head steady as you touch and return, touch and return. Stay on over. Good. If you want, you most certainly can bring the arms out and come together. Arms out, if you, you could do it without even touching the floor back down to the ground. Fantastic. Control yourself, belly button in, right? You're extending, but your core is tight. Five, four, three, two, and one. Great, let's shift on to the other side, bend that knee. And let's just try to touch the heel to the inside of your calf. Same spot every time. Good. If you'd like to add arms in, everything comes in, everything goes up. In and out. Great. In five, four, three, two. And one. Fantastic. If you, we're going to get down on the floor now or into bed, um, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, we're going to start face down if you can uh, do a plank. If doing a plank is bothersome for your back, we're going to have you flip onto your back. And on your back position, you most certainly could do just a pelvic tilt. If you have a little resistance band, please grab that. That would be fantastic. All 
Okay. So you're either on your back and you're doing your pelvic tilts, pushing your lower back flat while relaxing your legs and holding for five seconds. Or if you can tolerate being in a plank position, we're going to go elbows underneath the shoulders. Clasp your hands together, belly button in. You're going to lift up onto your knees or maybe up onto your toes. It's referred to as a plank because you should be nice and flat like a plank. We're going to try to add some movement to your plank today. So what does that mean? We're in this nice neutral position and I'm going to lift my hips up two inches and then come back to a neutral position. Lift up two inches. Now, I don't want you sagging at all, okay? So it's about lifting your hips up, two inches, back down, belly. Remember, it's always belly button in. And don't work through any back pain or continue with your pelvic tilts. Otherwise, we're gonna lift up three more times. And down, two, great, last one. And come right onto your back, please. We're gonna do some bridges now. You can either do your bridges with the band around your knees and a two-legged bridge, or if you like, we're gonna extend one leg and we'll do one-legged bridges today, okay? Either way, let's lift on up for five seconds and down. And let's lift up. Not arching the back and down. Belly buttons in, lift on up with two legs, one leg, or just a pelvic tilt. Good, two more. Great. And last one. Up. And down. If you're doing two legs, let's continue. If you do one leg, let's switch and lift on up or pelvic tilt and down, come on up again, it's two, lift up, and three, two more, that's four, last one, and down, all right. If you have a resistance band that you have not placed on you and you would like to use it, right around the leg so we can do all of our hip exercises. The band should be just above your knees. Let's come onto your side, knees flexed, feet together. We're going to do your clamshells, opening and closing. Right? I like to go hand on my hip so I can keep my hip rolled slightly forward. If you do that, you'll notice that you can't open the knee up quite as much. But you can probably get to those muscles a little better. And four, three, two, and one. Keep those knees bent, feet together. And now let's open up the whole leg. Knee and foot comes up and then back down. Okay. Up and back down, right back to a matched knee and foot. So keep your hip down away from your body. For five, four, three, two, and one. Let's strengthen out both your legs. Let's bend the bottom foot back. Roll your hip forward slightly, but then extend that top leg back and let's lift it up and down without allowing it to come back all the way to the ground. You do not have to do all the repetitions. So you go to your level of comfort. For five, four, three, two, and one. Let's come on to your other side, please. <clears throat> Same thing, knees bent, feet together. We're going to do the clamshell opening and closing. Remember, hip is rolled slightly forward. And once you get into that position, just leave it there. I do that by finding the top of my pelvis and just holding right onto it. And five, four, three, two, and one. 
Same thing, we're gonna do a fire hydrant coming up and down. Keep your hip away from your ear by pushing that hip down. You feel a little lot more in the hip that way. In eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, I know that leg is getting tired, but one more. Straighten up your legs in line with your body. Bend your bottom foot back for stability. Roll your hips slightly forward and then extend that leg back. And let's come up and down. Good. In 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's take that band off and come right onto your back. And once you get that band off, we're gonna have you straighten out that right knee. Left knee is either gonna be pulled to your chest, behind the knee, or if your knees don't bother you, you will certainly grab on the top of the knee. And you're just going to hold it there. If you don't feel like you get much of a stretch there in your hip at all, you most certainly can try pulling that knee towards your opposite shoulder, and you may get these muscles back in here. Wherever you feel like you get a gentle stretch, and if you have a hip replacement, go nice and easy, unless you know you shouldn't be doing these. Okay, opposite knee, please. Up towards your chest or slightly across towards the opposite shoulder. Bend both knees up for me, please. You're gonna cross your left ankle over your right knee. And with your left hand, you're gonna gently push that knee away to get some rotation at your hip. If you feel it primarily in your left knee, I want you to just take your right foot and slide it down a little bit and see if you can get away from it. Uh, we don't want you to irritate your knee on this. We just want to get a little bit of rotation in that hip. And let's switch the other side, cross the right ankle over the left knee with the right hand. Let's just push that right knee away. Good. And then let's go soles of your feet together. Knees are separated. You're going to gently put your palms on the inside of your thighs, put your knees down to get a little bit of a stretch there. And if there are any other stretches you typically do, this is a great time to do them. Um, next Monday is Martin Luther King Day. Uh, it's regular hours at PeopleFit, and I will be working a regular schedule. So if you are available, I will see you here. I hope you all have a great day. Take care.